Yeah, welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because a number of governors comes in with not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerian states from Abia to Zamfara. And this will enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talks about the profile of the profit, oh, sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talks about the potential of the state. It talks about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. So as usual, we have a preamble where we talked about why Bono State need to export. Then we go into peculiarities, talking about characteristics of the state. And then profile, talking about the income, unemployment, and debt profile of the state. Then the potential, looking at items that can be exported. Then the purchaser, looking at the market and the size, and the people that buy them, a proposal to the state. And we'll round off with how the state can profit from exportation. This is the logo of Bonu State. And here is the map of Bonu State. You can see the three senatorial districts in Bonu State. You can see Chibok, where we had issued the last time, Chibok Girls, that we talk about so much. Here you can see my degree. You can see my degree. You can see Bama. You know, some of these places are very uh, common to us. We are we know a lot about them today, called Sibukwara. If not for them, maybe we will not have even known some of these places exist. Only that we are not getting to know them for good things, but rather for the challenges the state is facing. But it might be interesting to know that in spite of the challenges, and this is why the government must be commended in that state, I understand the state governor really is a very, is a, is a very, very competent guy. I think he's a professor, Professor Zulu. He generated $8.2 billion in terms of revenue, in spite of the challenges. There are some states in Nigeria that doesn't have challenges like Bonu State, but they can't boast of what Bonu is generating, even with terrorist disturbance in the state. So why should this state export? The state can avoid overdependence of federal allocation through exportation. Exportation can help in boosting the GDP of the state. Exportation can help to create opportunity for SME to grow. Exportation in this state can help to create, to decrease Dependence of its businesses on the local market, as they can help the state to earn proceed and grow revenue. I mean, direct proceed, not from tax, but from export, and directly from the government. And I'll talk about that towards the end of this session today. It makes rural life become more lucrative and farming. The state can gain global relevance and market share in some product through exportation. Export makes the state home of creativity and innovation. Home of creativity and innovation. 
then this state can be expert can become catalyst for industrialization in the state. Export the opportunity for job creation for you. It helps the state to know the value of what it has as competitive advantage. Export can make the state to lead for that to follow in terms of revenue. Export makes the state to be independent of the federal government. Export makes the business in the state to enjoy numerous incentives from the government. Export with the opportunity to maximize the indigence of the state abroad. And poverty eradication is made possible through export because export can reduce poverty by increasing business potential and consequently job creation. You say, can we leave the state depending on wasting assets like oil? Can revive the economy of the state? Slow down rural urban migration. The government, the business enjoy tax free from exportation. Help in terms of idle capacity of the state. The viability of the state are boosted. Wealth creation for citizens of the state. Export can also help to extract potential of the state, potential product of the state. The competition can help the state to yearn for more improvement, and the state can also zero in the area of strength. Because area of strength that export has revealed. What do you see in Bonu today? Do you see only challenge of Boko Haram? And I'm not denying that challenge. But it might interest you to know that in spite of the challenges in that state, people are still doing business in that state. And I'll show you the data shortly. What do you see in this state? Do you see unemployment? Of course, there are unemployment. But it's not the only thing you see. Do you see poverty? Of course, there are poverty. But is that the only thing you see? Do you see frustration? Of course, there are frustration. This is our reality as a country. This is our reality as a country. There are rough frustration. But you can choose to see opportunities in farming, opportunities in mining, and opportunities in the population of this state. So there are opportunities in the state in spite of the challenges. In spite of the challenges. What are the peculiarities of this state? Bonu State was created in February 1976 by Murit Mohammed out of the northern, northeastern state. Until August 1991, it contained what is now called Yobe. Its capital is Maiduguri. So Yobe also was carved out, carved out of Bonu State. Located in the northeastern corner of Nigeria, Occupies 70,898 square kilometers. Occupies the larger part of uh, Chad Basin. Share border with uh, Niger, Chad to the northeast and Cameroon to the east. Within Nigeria, Bonu State share boundary with Adamawa in the south, Gombe in the west, and Yobe in the northwest. Bonu State derived its name from the ancient Bonu Empire. The state is dominated by Kanuri ethnic group and is an example of endurance of traditional political institution in some area of Africa. They are the emir of the former Kane Bonu Empire, have played 
a part in politics in this area for nearly a thousand years. Polo State is pluralistic in ethnic composition, rich in diverse historical and cultural heritage, date back for over a thousand years. Border Cameroon Chad, nicknamed Bonu, is the home of peace and the opportunities in agri manufacturing, real estate, healthcare, tourism, energy, and mining. The state capital is Maiduguri. It has 27 local government. Population is about 6.27 million people. The vegetation is tropical savanna. Major agri products is millet, sorghum, maize, cowpea, rice, wheat, cassava, cocoa yam, gum arabic, livestock, tamarind, mango, orange, tomatoes, onion, cabbage, lettuce, spinach, granite. Solid minerals include feldspar, limestone, kaolin, potash, iron ore, salt, cause, silica, gypsum, mica, uranium, graphite, and it has three agricultural zones. Looking deeper into this state, you will notice something. This state has this state has um, IGR of 82.2 billion. But the budget is 146.8, relying so much on federal allocation and, of course, on loans. Second largest state in Nigeria, after Niger State, strategic location, granite, sesame seed, rice, maize, wheat, a major product. The state is dedicated to gum Arabic belt, and, of course, with a lot of minerals. Unemployment in this state, with a working population of 1.873 million, those working for less than, not in labor force, 812, people in labor force, 1,061, 1, but of that only 350 or 349,000 people are gainfully employed. The unemployment and underemployment rate of this state is actually over 60%. Bonu State have per capita GDP of 1,214. This state produce a lot of products, sodom, granuts, maize, beans, rice, Soya beans cutting, and all these are done within the West Africa, bringing it from West Africa and also taking out of Bonu to other West African countries and to African, sorry, to Nigeria rather. Let's go into the profile of this state. This state, as of 2020, IGR was 11.5 billion. Federal allocation 63.22 billion. Debt profile, $89 billion in debt. Foreign debt, $20 million. This state cannot survive without federal allocation, like many other states in Nigeria. Like many other states in Nigeria, this state cannot survive without federal allocation. And I say, like many other states in Nigeria. So it's not just peculiar to this state, but like many other states in Nigeria, IGR is 15%. And federal allocation is 
instead not doing badly in capital expenditure, being almost 40%. According to budget report, Bonu State Home Office barely enjoy peace. <laughs> in the last decade. In 2020, it faced double tragedy. Fiscal chop, fiscal chop, because in addition to funding and COVID pandemic. Nevertheless, this idea of demonstrated resilience. However, given the state population and infrastructural need, what the state is investing or is generating rather is still very small. Still very, very small. But new idea per capita is 1,075 compared to average in Nigeria of 4,000 for 30 states. This is very low. And like I said, maybe we can understand for this state that has been, just like Boji said, even though it's styled home of peace, but I mean, anyone in Nigeria in the last 10 years know that um, that state have really not known peace. A free non known peace. But new state and five year development framework and 10 years again, the transformation plan may be implemented in a slower pace. The annual growth rate of the capital expenditure is not increased in the state. We note, however, although the state total revenue of 19.5 billion is still small to meet its particular need, it was still the largest recorded among all the northern states in the eastern region. The state, even though it's rapid with these challenges, is still among the highest in the north. Northeast in particular, meaning that some states are actually worse off. Of course, that's the tragedy of our country. We noted, however, sorry, the state capital expenditure of 39.21 billion account for 40.2824% of 97.44 billion total expenditure recording during the fiscal year under review, making it one of the 31 states that prioritize operating expenses over investment in capital infrastructure. 40.8 billion from the state capital expenditure was devoted to COVID 19 projects. With a total debt burden of almost 100 billion, Bono is the 26th most in debt test state in Nigeria. Total debt per capita is about 14,000 naira. This is less than the average debt per capita for of 27, 316 in the country. The state has now their component standard 20.81, up by 21.6, making the second smallest external debt size in the country, by extension, one of the least exposed to risk of exchange rate volatility. What's the potential of this state? What's the potential? The economy of Bonusa is largely agrarian, with livestock, husbandry, crop production, and fishing on Lake Chad dominating the economic activity of the state. The agri is mainly subsistent, with over 70% of our population depending on it directly or indirectly for their livelihood. It provides the bulk of employment, income, food, clothing for the rapidly growing population as well as supplying raw materials for agro-based industry in Bornu, 
agricultural contribute up to 65% of the state GDP. Major cash crop are cotton, sesame, granite, white food crop include maize, yam, cassava, sorghum, cowpea, millet, sweet potato, and rice. Cattle and other livestock also have enormous value chain growth opportunity. The recent insecurity that was eat Bono food production, which contributes to 5.69% of the food need of the state. Virtually 94% of the food consumed in Bono are imported either from in form of credit or gift from government, NGOs, civil society and World Food Program. The business of agricultural production, also known as agribusiness, is the production of crops, and present transportation distribution, and all these economic activities that define the term agribusiness. So Bonu State is bestowed with a climate that is comparatively subservient to agricultural production. A variety of food and cash crops are grown in the state, from legumes to fruits to vegetable to tree crop to livestock. You know, just imagine how blessed a state like Bono is. And then imagine again the challenge this state has faced. Financial inclusion can increase the added value of raw materials and strengthen local rural economy, food security and nutrition, and improving the quality of life in many homes at risk for exclusion of variability. So from this step, you see sorghum, millet, cowpea, and the percentage of the land used, rice, granite, tomato, cotton, soya beans, just one state in the country. Can we see the potential of these products that are produced in Bonu State? Who are those buying? Number one, you can see corn, $36.3 billion market in the world. If you focus on Africa alone, you see a market of $3.73 billion for corn. A product manufactured, I mean, cultivated in this state with a huge demand in Europe, in Asia, in North America, in Africa, and of course, in South America. $3.73 billion market in Africa alone, $36.3 billion for corn market in the world. How about rice? 24.7, with huge demand in like half of the demand coming from Asia alone, Iran, China, Saudi Arabia. Then Africa itself, taking up about 25%. Then you have North America, Europe, and South America. Look at the 6 billion market in Africa for rice. Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, South Africa, Ghana, Egypt, Mozambique. You and I know that Benin does not have population to support Benin being among the top importer of rice in the world, importing 3.08% of world import and 12% of African import. Of course, those products escape into the Nigerian uh, market through different uh, <laughs> routes. Wheat, another very important product. $44.1 billion market with a good chunk going to Egypt, Algeria. So it's to see that all Egypt, Algeria, and Morocco are a major market for wheat. Apart from the Asian, Turkey, Indonesia, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and the like, then Brazil, Peru, Italy, Mexico, but in Africa alone, 12.5. 
almost 30 percent of world consumption of wheat, which is why there's a big challenge right now with wheat related products with price going up because of the fight or war between Ukraine and Russia. $2.5 billion in Africa alone. Then Granot, $3.19 billion. China, Indonesia, Netherlands, Germany, Russia, Mexico, Canada, United Kingdom, Spain. But 171 million demand in Africa. So demand for granite in Africa is low. The last one is citrus, fruits, 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 citrus, fruits, orange, 14.2 billion. 14.2 billion. Germany, Netherlands, France, Russia, China, United States, Canada, and in, Niger in Africa, South Africa, that's about 100 million. So the demand for citrus in Africa is very, very low. So here are my proposal. You know, I say this every week, and I'll talk about it again regarding Bonus State. Uh, thank God for the governor, for the resilience of the people of the state. And I start of the challenges, the people are still doing business in the state. If SME are left alone to do primary production, harvesting and transport, primary processing and storage, secondary processing and packaging, marketing and sales, logistics and export and distribution, it will be an inefficient value chain operation. They, they, the value chain will have low processing capacity and low output. Few jobs will be created, low quality and packaging, high cost of production, and of course, non-competitive products because they will not be able to produce in an efficient manner. They are small. They are small. So what's my recommendation for the Bonu State government? Here's my recommendation. That the Bonu State government can leverage with the NGOs that are supporting them now to be able to build a shared processing facility for one of the major products in the state that can become a place where after production and harvesting by SMEs, SME took and buy from SME one, and then take it to this factory for primary processing and storage, then secondary processing and packaging. Now, so that means this factory, that means as an SME, I don't have to worry about NAVDA. I don't have to worry about packaging. I just need to give them my packaging design, give them my raw materials, and they will process and package for me. By the time I'm back in a week or two, I'm ready to pick up and I'm going to pay per unit. Then as an SME two, I can focus on marketing and sales, logistics, export, and distribution of my product in the export market. This creates efficient value chain operators, high processing capacity and high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production, and competitive product in the export market, increase job creation, decrease inequality, and decrease insecurity. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. Of course, when there is job, I do ants is devil's workshop. When there is job, we won't be having the issue we're currently having in the state. Now, in order to be able to export the product in your state, in Bonu State, you want it to go into Africa, Europe, and America. Partner will represent it at destination, set up warehouse at destination, set up entity in form of agent and distributor at destination, partner with independent agent and distributor at destination, organize and sponsor manufacturers for exhibition in the export market. Before we close, I will talk about the how this will work, the state, now, now, the proposal of how the state can make money directly, how the state can make money directly. Look at this chart, this is sesame seed. Remember the state has a large arable land. 
2.8 million hectares of land. Let's assume half of that is being cultivated for sesame seed. The agronomist told us one metric tons per hectare yield. That means we can get 1.4 million metric tons at the rate of $1,075 per ton. The state can generate $1.5 billion only from sesame seed. Even if the state cannot cultivate most part of the state because of Boko Haram, at least the secure area, the state can still generate some hundreds of millions. Because what the state needs, the budget of the state is just about less than 150 billion. So that means with $100 million, the state already have 60 billion naira. Because with, with, a, with 10 billion dollars and naira, uh, with um, one million dollars, the state have six hundred million. With ten, that's six um, six billion. With hundred, that's sixty billion. With two hundred, the state have, state have more than enough to be able to take care of its activities. If you add the cost of farming with the cost of export, the farmer's profit coming to about two thirty-seven billion. The state is already generating over 600 billion. If you net this off, the state can still have up to 386 billion. Remember the IGR of this state and all the allocation of this state. As of 2020, 11.58 internal peak generated revenue. But the budget is actually 20 in 2022, it's 267. <laughs> I like the way the state is budget in Nigeria. So 267 billion. But how will this work for the state? The state set up a special world bank coup, and they have a green ratio for sharing proceeds. The state provides funds while the SPV provides expertise. The SPV form the farmer in the state into cooperative across the state. The SPV purchase issue purchase order to farmers backed by a guarantee to go and train them, give them input and support to farm sesame seed. The SPV provide collection centers for the harvest, collect the products, clean them, process them, package them for export. Source for buyer for this product, do documentation and shipment, present document to the buyer's bank for payment, receive payment, pay all the stakeholders, the farmers, and share the profit with the state government, who is expected to have a lion's share of this arrangement. The impact of the suggested model for state government does not, do, I mean, goes beyond the generation of revenue by export. That's a humongous impact on employment generation, increased economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective and efficient an enduring model for diversifying the economy of the state in Nigeria. This model can be replicated by federal government at the federal level, especially for the exportation of solid minerals. Bye-bye.